In this video, I'm gonna talk about becoming an M&A attorney. As many of you know, that's what I do. So let's just start off by talking about what is an M&A attorney. M&A stands for Mergers and Acquisitions. It's uh, the representation of corporations or owners of companies who are in the process of either merging their company with another corporation or selling their company to an acquiring corporation. Uh, or some other structure in which somebody is really selling a company and, and another party is actually buying the company. And so M&A is just kind of a short uh, abbreviation for mergers and acquisitions and all of the transactions that take place with regard to those corporations and other business entities. So I'm gonna give some advice about how to become an M&A attorney and I'm gonna save that for the end of the video. But I think I start by just kind of walking you through my story and how I became an M&A attorney. So before I became a lawyer, I worked in business for about 10 years. I was in business management. So I already had a pretty good sense of how business worked. I often get asked, what classes should a law student take if they're interested in M&A? And I think some of the classes can be helpful, but they're certainly not determinative. So Obviously, you're going to take business organizations or business associations. Uh, you're going to take contracts and any other class that has anything to do with business transactions. There might You might take business finance or secured transactions. You might take a class on securities law or tax law. Any of these classes will be helpful and informative in some way uh, to the practice of M&A. I also had the benefit of uh, being able to do a legal internship at Qualcomm in San Diego. And during that internship, I learned a lot about strategic alliances, mergers and acquisitions, and really the distinction between the legal work involved and the business issues that the business folks in a transaction are really meant to handle rather than the lawyer. But more importantly than that, it's really understanding what's involved in M&A work. And the two large practice areas that are mostly involved in M&A work are corporations and business transactions. So you really need to have a strong handle on corporations and general business law and commercial transactions. And so when I first got licensed, that was the focus of my entire practice. I formed corporations, I amended corporations, I dealt with all the directors and shareholders, and I work through all the documents that govern all of the relationships, the rights and duties of all the uh, different stakeholders uh, in a corporation. And that really was the foundation for me and my practice of understanding exactly how, how all of that worked. And I really learned a lot by just simply reading the documents, including the forms that are available on some of the subscription services that we as lawyers use. But ultimately, um, you just gain experience through dealing with contracts and corporations. And I did that for quite a number of years, of five years on my own. And I was fortunate enough to be recruited by a, a rather large law firm. And uh, in that law firm, I worked on more significant transactions of all kinds and specifically started working on mergers and acquisitions, where I gained a lot of experience in a broad range of different types of businesses, different types of transaction structures, and all of which were incredibly informative. I worked there for almost four years. I got a lot of great experience there. And when I decided to leave the firm to go back out on my own, it was clear to me that M&A work was the, the kind of work that I really enjoyed the most and I set out to specialize specifically in mergers and acquisitions. And for a number of years, I helped both buyers and sellers of businesses. So that's been my experience. And over the last couple of years, I further specialized into only representing sellers of companies. And I did that for a number of reasons, but I found that what I liked most was dealing with entrepreneurs who had built something of value, who were then interested in, in selling their companies and engaging in what I consider to be one of the biggest transactions of their life. It was gonna be life changing for them. And I just found I really enjoyed being uh, their representative in those types of transactions. And so that's where my practice is now, specializing in representing sellers of companies. 
So that's a little bit of how I got to where I am today in my practice. And so if you're starting out as a law student or a new lawyer, here are some tips that I would suggest. Obviously take the classes in law school that we already discussed. Uh, that's first and foremost, but if you're already a lawyer, then I would strongly recommend spending quite a bit of time reading practice guides related to corporate law and general corporate governance specifically. And really who has what rights and what duties in each corporation and the implications of helping people to buy in and buy out of corporations. And when I say corporations, that means all types of business associations. It could include LLCs or all the various types of corporations that there may be. And I think that's a great place to start. It'll, it'll set your foundation for learning about how corporate transactions actually happen. I think if you do that and you're dealing with uh, partners that own corporations, you're inevitably going to be in and around the buying in and buying out of certain shareholders or some of those partners. And those are like little mini transactions that deal with corporations. And they're very nice transactions to learn on because they don't involve too much risk uh, compared to doing a hundred million dollar transaction with a public company or a sophisticated a hedge fund or private equity, you're really just dealing with uh, just a few people dealing with smaller businesses and smaller numbers. And that's a really great place to get some experience. I would also start looking at sample M&A uh, transaction documents. They usually take the form of, of three types. Uh, most popular for smaller transactions would be an asset purchase agreement. You can find samples of these almost anywhere on the internet, but certainly through Westlaw and LexisNexis. Uh, the other types of documents would be a stock purchase agreement and understanding the differences between those two types of agreements would be very helpful for you. And then uh, what's also used would be a merger agreement. Although I have to tell you, even though we call it mergers and acquisitions, uh, formal technical mergers are actually quite rare. It is far more common uh, that there is actually going to be a, uh, an outright purchase or sale of stock uh, in, in most of these larger transactions rather than mergers. You can also find code sections under your state law, usually in the corporation's law section uh, of the code, civil code. And you can clearly read some of those code sections with regard to the issuance of stock or the purchase and sale of stock or mergers because there are specific rules for each state. So if you have that foundation and you have some of that experience, then really you can just start holding yourself out as a transactional attorney and you will want to start looking for matters and deals that have more to do with selling a company rather than selling small pieces of a business or assets of a business and that type of thing. And if you're already working for a law firm, you'll clearly want a message to, to your superiors that those are the types of transactions that you want to work on, um, that you're very interested in learning more about that area, and that you'll do whatever it takes to work on those deals. Um, and you know, if you work in a very large law firm, then you want to identify those senior partners who are working on those types of matters and you want to reach out to them and see if you can you know, build a trusting relationship with them so that when those opportunities arise, they will call on you to, to assist with those matters. And I can tell you, working on large M&A transactions while you're working at a medium or large law firm is by far where you're going to get the absolute best experience. But having built your own experience or your own book of business in the same realm, will just provide you with more options, more credibility, and you will simply just work your way up the value chain uh, in your career. I think one of the mistakes that a lot of new lawyers and law students make is they're not very uh, committed to any particular practice area, and they tend to accept jobs, work, and new clients in a broader range of matters because they just want any experience or they want any kind of work, and if you need to make income, I can absolutely understand that. I was in a very similar boat when I started out. But I would suggest that being a little bit more selective and messaging to either the law firm that you work for 
or your client base or your referral partners that you're really focused on business transactions, including when you're searching for your first job, I, I do believe that that will definitely expedite your career growth in the area of business transactions and M&A. So that's it for this video. I hope you find that helpful. If you like it, please leave some comments or share it with somebody else. And you can always sign up for my monthly email uh, on the sign up page on blog.law. Thanks for watching.